my daughter has just died. But come, lay your hand on her, and she will live. Jesus rose and followed him, and so did his disciples. A woman suffering hemorrhage for 12 years came upon behind him and touched the tassel of his cloth. She said to herself, if only I can touch his cloak, I shall be cured. Jesus turned around and saw her and said, Courage, daughter, your faith has saved you. And from that hour, the woman was cured. When Jesus arrived at the official's house and saw the flute players and a crowd who were making a commotion, he said, Go away. The girl is not dead, but sleeping. And they ridiculed him. When the crowd was put out, he came and took her by the hand, and little girl arose. And news of this spread throughout all the land. The gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise you, Lord. Lord. This morning's gospel, the two extraordinary miracles. Extraordinary because two persons who did not have perfect faith are in fact perhaps didn't come with the proper motivation. The first is an official of the temple. And of course, as an official of the temple, he would have access to all the pharmacies or medications available at that time. And he probably knew a lot of medics also, but they were unable to help him. So he comes to the Lord, perhaps not with the proper motive, but he comes out of desperation, desperation. But you see, the Lord accepts us wherever we are, whatever point in life we are. We may not have the strongest faith or the proper motives, but just like that gentleman, the Lord accepts us where we are. When it comes to the woman who had a bleeding problem, remember that she was forbidden, she would be looked upon as unclean and therefore not allowed to appear in public. But she breaks that taboo, that law, and she comes before the Lord. There is a suggestion that perhaps she came out of superstition out of superstition, but it didn't make any difference to the Lord. He accepted her, even even though it was superstition, and healed her. The first man, of course, his daughter had died, but in those days, the Jewish people waited three days before they realized that the person had died. So the Lord asked us this morning to continue his healing ministry in the way we deal with our brothers and sisters, those who are sick in our community, by visiting them, by calling them, by praying for them. We are continuing the ministry of the Lord. Today, of course, is in Independence Day, so I want to read something to you that I came across yesterday evening. This is a day to thank God for the political and religious freedom we enjoy and to pray for God's special blessings on the rulers and people of our country. It is a day to remember with gratitude the founding fathers of our democratic republic, especially Thomas Jefferson, the author of the Declaration of Independence, and James Madison, the architect of the Constitution, who believed that all power, including political power, came from God and was given to the people who entrusted this power to their elected leaders. It is a day to remember to pray for all our brave soldiers who made the supreme sacrifice of their lives to keep this country a safe and a free country, and for those who are now engaged in the fight against terrorism in Afghanistan. It is a day to remember the basic principle underlined in the Constitution that all men are created equal, 
that they are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable life rights, that among those are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. It is a day to remind ourselves that we have a duty to protect these God-given rights by voting into power leaders who believe in God and who have character, integrity, experience, and belief in inalienable human rights. It is a day to fight for the fundamental right of life, denied to pre-born children to grow and develop in their mother's wombs and to the sick and the elderly to die gracefully without fearing euthanasia. It is a day to pray for and work for liberation for all those who are still slaves in our free country, slaves to civil ha evil habits, addictions to eat nicotine, alcohol, drugs, pornography, promiscuity, and sexual aberrations. It is a day to take a pledge to become recommitted to doing something about our own growth in Christ and to living as Americans who contribute something to our religion, church, and country, and to the lives of others. It is a day to remember where we came from, what we stand for, and the sacrifices that thousands of our countrymen have made on our behalf. It is a day to raise our voices, to protect, protest against liberal, agnostic, and atheistic political leaders, media bosses and activists, liberal judges who denied religious moral education to our young citizens. It is a day to offer our country and all its citizens on the altar of God, asking his special providential care, protection, and blessings.